Hey there, folks. Uh, so last time I had this controller out, I was uh, upgrading it with several um, aftermarket parts, and well, it didn't go so well, and I'm gonna hopefully try and uh, alleviate some of that today. Uh, so when I originally purchased this thing, it had uh, mechanical damage to one of the joysticks. Um, I, I think it was left, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, I ended up replacing both of them with some aftermarket Kale switches. Um, I was really impressed with some of Kale's offerings in the um, mechanical keyboard uh, um, market. So I was really hoping that their joysticks would, you know, wow me there too, but fortunately that wasn't the case. Uh, so let me plug this thing in and show you what's going on here. Uh, so I have it plugged into my phone. Oh, there we go. Had to press some buttons. Um, so as you can see, you know, joysticks are working, but if I just leave these where they are, you can see the left one doesn't center worth a damn at all. Um, as it turns out, I have learned some things since I've did that original video and uh, maybe you guys don't know that either but I certainly didn't at the time uh, but these controllers are calibrated from the factory to the specific joysticks that they come with so something that I should have done was save both the sticks and then reuse the potentiometers in the replacements uh, then I wouldn't have had to calibrate it um, there is to my knowledge no way of calibrating it at the firmware level to fix that. Uh, you can calibrate it within the operating system itself and that tends to that tends to address the issue but that doesn't really solve my problem here um, because the, the problem isn't that the stick doesn't think it's centered. The problem is that the stick just doesn't actually center. Um, so you can sort of see as I wiggle this thing around, if you look at what the sticks are doing on my phone, um, you can see that they move around a lot and I just, I, it's terrible. I am particularly sensitive to dead zones. Um, so that is, you know, the little bit of wiggle room you get on the stick where you can kind of move it before the, the, the spring tension picks up the slack, um, you know, backlash, whatever you want to call it. These sticks are really bad. The kale switches have heaps of backlash. I hate it. I want them gone. Um, second, I installed these like magnetic elite style joysticks. I don't like them. They're too heavy. I don't think they're doing these stick boxes any favors. Um, it's certainly not helping, but the most egregious problem is the shoulder buttons in these, the shoulder triggers in these controllers are Hall Effect sensors out of the box, which means there's magnets in here. This left stick is over one of the magnets. So, as you can see, if I push this down, you look at B6 on my phone here, you can see that's moving around. Right? <laughs> if I press the uh, trigger down, you can see it moves because that's uh, B6 is my left trigger here. But if I press this down, I get as much as 12% activation on my left trigger. And I mean, what, what? <laughs> In what games do you use either the joystick or the trigger, but never both? Like what, that, that's, not, that's not how this works. I mean, it doesn't really matter for me personally, because I've, I already replaced this controller. I just bought a series controller. It's fine. It's whatever. But this is still a perfectly good controller. I would like to get it working if I can. Uh, so the plan is to swap out the kale switches that are in here and install these Hall Effect switches that are allegedly all the rage. And um, we'll see if they're not piles of junk. I'm also going to swap out the... Uh, stick caps because um, yeah like I said I, I don't know these ones are a little bit too heavy I don't like it I don't think it works out very well and yes I know I have a battery mod in here and yes I know it, it, it's from them but it, I I had the battery mod it's not um I don't actually recommend it 
this thing apart. I don't remember if I had the aftermarket housing installed beforehand or if I installed the aftermarket housing during this, the stream that I did this, but um, I don't know, I'm into it. Well, I say aftermarket, but I'm actually not convinced that this housing is aftermarket. I think it might be OEM, which makes it even cooler. But the controller itself is OEM. Came with aftermarket housing in red. I thought it was OEM, I made that mistake. But I made an egregious error with these sticks. Oh, you know what? I suppose it's worth doing a comparison here. Let me get this last screw out. So on the original sticks, I have an actual OEM stick. This is what would have come in the controller. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of play in there. You know, wiggles just a little bit in this direction. And then if I rotate it, it's actually really, really not that bad in the uh, other direction. I don't, I don't know which orientation this is. So I don't know if that's X or Y. I'm pretty sure that would be the Y orientation. I'm pretty sure these go in with the button to the side. But um, this kale stick, what I replaced these with, I guess these were in some sort of razor controller based off the the green. Um, you know, they've got the manufacturer's stamp on them. These things are terrible. These things have so much more play. I'm so disappointed in myself for not even realizing this before installing them. But it's just, it's terrible. This is out of the box play. This stick has literally never been soldered. You can tell from the clean pins here. Uh, this is one of the Hall Effect sticks that I grabbed. There is zero play in here. So as far as the mechanical properties of these things go, I'm happy with that. If, if, the, if, if my sticks work and there's zero play, that is good enough for me because realistically, this thing is gonna end up being a TV remote. I'm gonna use it to control my home theater PC because I mean, I already have a better controller anyway that I, that I actually use for playing games. So uh, anyway, pull this stuff out. Yeah, see big ass magnet on the bottom of it. Who'd have, who'd have guessed that would cause problems? All right, how do these things come apart? I am out of practice. But in my defense, I don't usually have to take these things apart. Uh, I suppose I should take this out so I can get around that. Yeah, might as well desolder those. Bit that up. And of course it's a different size. Not that size. But that size, all right. So the outside was Torx T9, same as the Xbox 360 controllers. And inside was Torx T7, because why not? And I thought that just clicked off. Suppose I didn't have to do that. I've got more than enough clearance to get in here. 
But I can also just desolder this and get it out entirely. There, now we don't have to solder inside the shell. It's a shame. It feels like the market for these sticks is just a scam, like a literal scam. Um, there's just buzzwords that manufacturers throw around and they sell you literal garbage and just hope you aren't knowledgeable enough to do anything about it. And in my case, that's exactly what happened. Ugh, there's a whole bunch of schmoo on there. That's a first. doing a very good job at sucking. I think something else is clogging it up. Well, that makes this extremely difficult. See, it sounds normal. Until I try sucking something up. What's going on here? I'll have to investigate that later. I don't know why I have so little suction. I guess I'll pause here and splice this together while I figure this out because this was going to be a quick 20 minute video and now it's going to be like 40 minutes because of <coughs> my tool that I'm not properly maintaining it seems. I'll be back. All right. Um, sorry for that jump cut. That was some of my worst work I have ever done. I am absolutely ashamed. Um, but here we are. I've got them both out. Um, the sticks are intact. Hopefully the controller is too. Um, I figured out the issue with my, um, desoldering gun too, and also user error there. Um, you, you may notice you can see into the chamber now because I have given it a thorough clean and what, well, what do you know? Now it's working totally fine. Um, I'm guessing the filter was, uh, clogged up and once the filter got clogged up, well... Kind of, things kind of cascaded from there. Um, my tip that I was using still isn't, um, still clogged. I haven't figured that out yet. I'll worry about that later though. But anyway, I've got the sticks off. I'll save these because even though I hate them, they're still technically basically new parts and I can't bear to part with them. Um, and I have some of the pads patched up that uh, I managed to mess up. So now it's just a matter of installing the new one, 
the new shtick and uh, we should be good to go. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, I'm going to start with this corner here. One would assume I've never soldered before in my life with how I'm doing this. Holy cow. That should do it. three real slow because I damaged all three of these pads and some adjacent ones as well. And this pad I also damaged. And if you're looking at this and you you see what might be a short between uh, these two pads here. Um, it's not, it's a capacitor, because I damaged the pad that that capacitor is supposed to be attached to. Probably don't need it with the Hall effect nonsense, but we'll see, I guess. Oh my god, that looks terrible. This is some of my worst work ever. I mean, I'm glad I've already replaced this controller because... Shit. I might have to after this video, or I, w I would have had to after this video anyway. <laughs> These tinned up, the attached demotors. All right, I think we're just about done. Now I've got to reassemble this thing enough that I can plug it back in so I can calibrate it. Uh, 
<laughs> That's not annoying at all. Cool. So I can get to the Y potentiometer of the left stick while it's in this frame. And that's it. That's not fun. Uh, <laughs> okay. Cool, 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 cool. I guess let's disassemble some more. Yeah, I think going forward, the game plan should be to just not let me near any Xbox controllers. Because this is, um, this has turned into a disaster. Shoulder buttons, you have to slip those off so that you can slip this off. That's not going anywhere. I'm at the point where I think I'm just going to use force. And I think that was fine. Right. Those are still exceptionally difficult to get to, but it's doable now. Right, so, cool, 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 cool. Plug that in, you can see my sticks are mostly working, uh, but they're not centered. So, to center them, I have to basically nudge the magnet over inside the stick until, until it works. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> oh and it doesn't fit. Oh. And when I touch that, it turns the controller off. Dope. This is a terrible design for this. Let's see if I can make a better tool. That'll do, yeah.
Now, turns out I have no idea what I'm doing. There's these little holes that you're supposed to jam a pokey tool into. And you can adjust the alignment of the magnet on the shaft itself. And from there, usually, you can uh, get it relatively spot on. Or you can make it so much worse. You gotta send it the opposite direction and then let it reset. But as you can see, I am not making a lot of progress, so I think I'm gonna poke away at this and um, I don't know. I'll report back when I've got something, I guess. Okay, that is an exceptionally tedious process, but all we care about is making sure the, the sticks are centered and well, I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. Um, as you saw, it was just a matter of um, poking a pokey tool in these little holes in, this, in the sides of the potentiometers and um, adjusting it. Because what happens is inside the little potentiometer, as you move the stick, you can see the potentiometer moves left and right and then same thing with the other axis. Uh, but on the Hull Effect sticks, instead of a carbon film potentiometer with a wiper going across left and right, uh, there's just a magnet swinging from the bottom and then a sensor. And so all you're doing when you stick your um, tool in there is you're, you're jamming up the magnet and then letting the stick center on itself. And I guess it's, it's cogged um, so that it allows you to, to spin the magnet without... Um, without resetting the, the, the stick itself. Um, and so with enough fine tweaking, you can get it lined up. And let's see if I can, can't get this controller put back together without too many more mishaps, which by the way, right here, this is what I was hitting with the um, tweezers here. These are inductors for the internal power supplies. So when I was shorting those out, I was shorting out the internal power supply on the controller which is super neat. That's a fantastic, fantastic design. And I'm not criticizing Microsoft or anything. I'm, I'm criticizing the makers of these sticks for having to poke tools in that area. I think that's a silly spot. I understand that because it is a mechanical adjustment that we're making, that options were, of course, very limited. Ooh, I should probably put this in, huh? And, um, you know, it basically, it, it is what it is, but I still don't like it. Oh my God. Just stay in there. Oh, great. Now I'm missing a button. Oh, are you kidding me? right there. Oh, it is one of those days. Now, can I just put this in here? to just sit down. It's, it's these stupid shoulder buttons. Microsoft put them on the inside. And it means these have to come apart in a certain order. Can this come out? There. 
think that'll make life a lot easier. I genuinely enjoyed controllers better when uh, they were so much simpler. I don't, I don't understand what this arms race for complexity was. There's so many more parts in this thing than on other controllers. I just, I don't, I don't understand what function that actually adds. You know, you take apart an old Xbox 360 controller, It's it, there's one circuit board in it. There's four pieces of plastic, not counting the buttons. You've got the front half of the shell, the back half of the shell, the bottom bezel, and the top bezel. Like, what, 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 what is this nonsense? There's no way this is... Th I, I refuse to believe that this is better. More expensive. Sure. Yeah, but is more expensive better? It's just frustrating. I'm frustrated and I'm taking it out on things. But that's what I get. Oh, we'll just... Why don't, why, don't, why don't you make a video on this, Mako? It'll be neat. You don't have videos on those Hall Effect sticks, and last time you did your Xbox One controller, you kind of messed it up. It'd be nice to set the record straight, you know, get everything cleaned up, get it fixed up, you know, quick in and out, 20-minute video. It'd be great. <sighs> Crying out loud. If this controller ever has to come apart for something again, I just, I don't think that's gonna happen. One is which. Okay. I'm pretty sure the gray is supposed to be positive and black is supposed to be negative because black is almost always ground, except when everything's black. So maybe that's the case here. But this is also just a simple rumble motor, so maybe it doesn't even matter. These wires right here are for the trigger haptics, which is actually a really cool technology. I wish it were supported in more things, but these days it seems to be supported in most things. Yeah, these little rumble motors up here. All right, and then I'm pretty sure I had it in this orientation. But 
you guys can yell at me in the comments that I'm installing these backwards. Oh, that is a terrible joint. Let's get the other one in and then I'll fix that. Ooh. Those are both terrible. And suddenly they're both lovely. Amazing what a little bit of flux does. All right, I gotta fix that. Just like that. You can't you can't even tell I was in there, right? That's how that works. Beauty. That side is seated. This side is not because it's pinching the wires. Nice. Okay, now it's seated, I think. Yeah, probably. Fucking <sighs> motors. There's gotta be a simpler way to do all this nonsense. Like the PS5 controllers are so much worse. Oh my God. This arms race of stupidity. All, all the, everyone's doing it. You've got Nintendo and their Switch controllers, you've got the crazy mid-frame and the, um, the flex ribbon for the shoulder buttons. I just...
things were better, I swear. These, this, this was fine if, if the D-pads weren't shit. This was fine, but... No, oh, they just had to go and make it so complicated. Okay, you know what, enough bitching. This is done. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Best thing, if you look at B6, my trigger is still working totally fine, and my D-pad has absolutely nothing to do with it. I don't like these. I said that before, I'm saying it, I'm saying it again. I don't like these. The magnet on the back of this thing interferes with the, um, I was wondering if it would interfere with any of this stuff, but it isn't. Um, the magnet on the back of those interferes with that. I could have fixed that easily by just swapping out these and not swapping out the whole stick, but now my sticks at least center, mostly. Um, it's a lot better than it was. Uh, it's not perfect. There's definitely still some room for improvement, but it's good enough, right? That's all I need out of this stupid controller. Now I can put my stupid battery pack back in. My stupid battery cover that I modified so that I could actually use USB type C chargings, char chargings, chargers. And what do you know? Look at that. It works. Everybody happy. Ta da! We did it. Oh, but there was definitely one more thing I needed to test. Cool thing is I can still do both of these things at the same time. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to see with these sticks is how much dead zone there is at the edges. So I know there's basically no dead zone at the center. Um, I'm, I like that, I'm totally into that. I, I, I'm good with that. These things have very, very minimal backlash. And as you can see, just, just, you know, just giving it a little jiggle, you could see, you know, the numbers bounce around. Um, it's very sensitive. I like that. That's good. Um, I tried playing, what's that spaceship game? Elite Dangerous with an old Xbox 360 controller uh, before Windows had built in dead zones. And oh my God, it was, it was so, it was so horrible. It was actually this controller and like, look, look, look at how much this thing dances around. There, there's just mechanical slop in the mechanism and it's terrible and the software didn't account for it. And ugh. anyway, this is better. <laughs> These are much tighter, but one, one thing that I was concerned about is, okay, so let me set this down. And I'm gonna try bringing this all the way over to the left. You can see it's maxed out on the gauge, but there's still a lot of, a lot of room to move the stick over. Um, so we've effectively traded dead zone in the center for dead zone in the outside. And now my stick only, you know, I only have to move it this far instead of all the way around to get the full range of motion. That's good in that we're not losing any motion out of this thing, but that's bad because I've effectively gimped the precision of my sticks. So now, before, when I had this entire range to work with, now I only have this range to work with. So if I'm playing a game like Call of Duty, I don't know, you know, any any first person or third person shooter, it means I now have to be more precise with my movements to get, if, if I don't want full left or full right, I have to be more precise with my movements is all I'm trying to say. I don't like that. Um, I can work around this by just installing taller sticks like these, for example, these are taller sticks, except that these have magnets in them. And at the very least, the left one does interfere with the the trigger, so it's just not usable on this controller, but yeah, I don't know. In this particular case, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with it because 
I'm gonna use this thing as a glorified home theater PC remote. I'm gonna get one of them little keyboards that snap onto the bottom and you know, it'll be great. And it looks cool, which is the only thing that matters. <laughs> and it's rechargeable because I have a charger at my couch. I mean, who, who, who doesn't? So that, that works for me. That is what I want. And I can use it to play some games if I want now that it's actually reasonable. So do I recommend these sticks? I don't really think I, that, I, that I do. Um, they're certainly heaps better than the kale ones. Uh, <laughs> The kale ones were nigh on unusable, which is a damn shame because kale usually makes really good stuff. Um, just not this time. Um, these sticks, on the other hand, they had Ghoulie Kit logos on them, but I didn't buy them from Ghoulie Kit. So I don't know if they're like legit or clones or just like a reseller or something, but I don't know. It seems fine. Um, Let's do, let's do the circularity test just for shits and giggles too. Woo, look at that. That's beautiful, 21%. Let's do the other one. Yeah, look at that, 21%. Nice. That is, for all intents and purposes, terrible. Um, and just for comparison's sake. Here is a stock, lightly used. Um, I'm just gonna hold that like that. We'll do our circularity test. You can see the stock sticks a little bit better. Yeah? And I mean, these also center totally fine, but like I said, these are the factory sticks. This is an unmodified controller. It's already calibrated to these. It's already nice and nice and centered. Um, but also you notice only when it hits the actual edge of the uh, controller does it max out on the controller tester. So this is objectively a better controller this is objectively a better system um, using the uh, the default carbon film um, potentiometers. That's not to say Hall Effect can't get there, but these ain't it. These are terrible. This is, okay. It's usable, but I don't, it's by no means an upgrade. Um, if you're the type, you know, you keep chewing through your controllers, you know, drift is a, is a household slur for you, then, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but the solution still ain't there. Just try and take better care of your controllers and, and, um, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. If you have the if your sticks wear out, you know, you get mechanical wear in the mechanism. Um, you know, it's not centering properly, stuff like that. You can pull the whole stick box out, but leave the potentiometers in there and then install a new stick box. Um, there seem to be plenty of reasonable aftermarket ones as long as you keep your original potentiometers. I didn't do that with this, which is why I've swapped it over to um, the Hull Effect. Uh, because the alternative is you install one of those little aftermarket potentiometer tweak kits, but then you lose your full range of motion. So before, um, or now, I guess, I can move it about 75% of the way and it'll register 100%. Okay, that's fine. It's usable. It is what it is. But if I were to install one of those calibration kits with the carbon film resistors, um, I could move it all the way over to the left and get, you know, 100%, 100%. But then over on the right, maybe I'll move it all the way 100% of the way, but it'll only register about 80% or something of that sort. I will lose range of motion, uh, not physical, but electrical range of motion. And that is, that's worst case scenario for me. I'd rather have my full range of motion and then just have to manually like center the stick 
find my own center or some bullshit. But even that's less than ideal, so I'm, I'm good with this. Like I said, it's not perfect. It, we're not there yet. Um, but uh, it's certainly better than it was. Because, you know, like, like I said, I bought this controller um, with a bad stick. There was, it, the, the stick itself was just damaged and there was nothing I could do about it. This is better. I wish I had kept the potentiometers so that I didn't have to recalibrate it and I could have just used carbon film sticks, but this is fine too. So there we go. I think, I think that's about all I've got. Um, I did go ahead and grab these off of AliExpress. Normally I would link to the parts that I found, but in this specific case, um, the seller actually ripped me off because I ordered a set for Xbox One and Switch Pro, and well, you see I've done the video on the Xbox One controller, but I didn't do the video on the Switch Pro controller, so you can you can guess what happened there. Um, I don't, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't want to help that seller in any way whatsoever, um, but these things are basically a dime a dozen on AliExpress. If you've seen one of them, you've seen them all. As far as I can tell, there are two manufacturers of sticks, and only one of them makes Xbox One sticks. So if you can find any sticks, you can probably find the sticks I've used, at least right now. Um, things may change in the future, of course, but as of the time of filming, you know, you can check the date in the description. And, and anyway, I'm rambling, I gotta go. Um, I'm happy, I have a controller, it works. It could be better. Catch you all next time.